Hello everybody, Matthew Armstrong here on day 59 of our 90 day life transformation program from mediocrity to mastery and this this whole week, uh, this maybe more than a week, 10 days we're, we're going through health and vitality and wellness and how to really unleash your vitality and through studying the work of uh, Dr. John Martini in the Values Factor book we're getting a, a very very deep understanding of the, the mind-body connection and how our thinking and our perceptions and our perspectives uh, create either health or dis-ease in our bodies. And by the way, if you want to get this book, which I, I highly recommend, go to drdmartini.com and you can purchase your copy. Uh, we are reading directly from the book as well, so again, if this is your first uh, video you're watching, make sure you go back and watch the whole series. This is day 59. And you know, it's something that I focus on for many years, mastering my health, mastering my body, uh, getting a deep understanding of all aspects of what it takes to really create um, wellness in the body, wellness in the mind, to live a, a, a life of vitality and longevity as well, right, Go, going into later years. Um, so I, I want to know what it really takes to create that. So. That's been part of my journey, a huge part of my journey over the years, looking at it from all different angles. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very broad in my, in my view of how I look at things. I don't just narrow down like some people do. I, I, I want to see everything from different angles, different perspectives. Oh yeah, what does this mean? How does that correlate with that? And just putting together the big jigsaw, which it is, it's a big jigsaw, right? Um, uh, putting together the puzzle of of health and wellness and vitality and you know got it down to a, a fairly fine art at this stage and, uh, and and studying the work of Dr. Demartini has taken it to a deeper level and also given me a deeper understanding of what I already understood anyway and just given me some more clarification on that because you know I, 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 I totally believe that uh, dis-ease is not a bad thing at all it's simply uh, communication from the body, symptoms, right? S symptoms are simply your body communicating to you, um, communicating to you that something needs to change, right? Oh, you know, you just say, for example, you've got a headache. Okay, so it's not like I've got a headache, that means I must take um, something to stop the headache, meaning I need to take a, a, a pharmaceutical. You know, you're, you're not deficient in pharmaceuticals, that, that's the truth of it, right? And so because you have a headache doesn't mean you need to take a pharmaceutical. And I'm not saying I've never taken a pharmaceutical for a headache because I have in the past, but 99% of the time um, I, I opt for other options um, and look for other ways. And so it can mean a number of things. So it doesn't always just mean one thing. So when you receive a communication from the body, quite often in a pain or what we call dis-ease, the body out of ease, where you're not feeling at ease. You're like, okay, I have a pain in my neck, I have a pain in my head, a pain in my stomach, whatever. That is dis-ease. That is the body out of ease. What, what the pharmaceutical industry has done is they've taken that word and they've, they've, they've sort of taken it for themselves, right? And they've said, well, only um, a, a drug can, uh, can treat or cure a disease and they've classified what a disease is right but simply dis-ease is the body out of ease and that could be anything right when you're just not feeling at ease you know or well, the mind you know dis-ease of the mind right so so for example you have a headache what does that mean well it could mean any number of things it could mean you're dehydrated so I have a headache I'm like okay well have I drank enough water you know? so drink some water Am I just detoxing? You know, the, when the body detoxes, one of the um, detox symptoms is quite often headaches. As the toxins get released from a body, they go through a bloodstream and can, can bring on headaches, etc. Yeah? So maybe I'm just doing a cleanse, doing a detox. Maybe I just haven't drank enough water, maybe I'm dehydrated. Maybe I'm a little bit stressed about something and it's tension going up the back of my neck where tension often sits in the shoulders, goes up and it's created a tension headache. Maybe I've been out in the sun too much and I've been squinting so much that it's actually uh, pulled one of the muscles that goes in my head, which can happen as well, right? And um, so there's any number of, of things. So it's important to have 
um, to, 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 to be savvy in your communication with your body and go, it's not just, oh, this has happened, so that means this. No, quite often it can mean a number of different things. So you've got to work out what, what it means. And you know, the, the, the body, like, like, like a little child, when a little child wants something, the little child's crying, okay, well, what's up with the little child? You know, does the little child's crying, that means he's upset, but about what? Is it pain? Is it something that's happened? Is it this, that, the other? Right, so you have to work it out. And um, so that's why I'm saying, you know, if, if it's a headache, work it out. Um, for another example for me, also emotions. Emotions, they tend to show up different places in the body. Like different negative emotions will show up in, in different, for example, pride. Pride is often knee injuries, right? Pride is often knee injuries. And um, our, our, our personality being out of alignment with, with our true self, that's often neck injuries. Neck injuries, right? It's, it's the out of alignment uh, of that. So whenever I've got a knee injury, I don't go, oh damn, I've got a knee injury, um, this is crappy. I, I say, well, okay, where's the blessing in this? What's, what's my knee telling me? You know, there's, community, there's, there's intelligence in every cell in your body, in every part of your body. So whenever there's pain, it, it's a communication. So I say, okay, what's, what's my knee telling me? I've got pain in my knee, what's it telling me? Okay, have I been, have I had, had this like false pride about something? H have I had this, this pride limiting me or stopping me from doing something or not doing something? Or being a certain way with somebody, right? I was, the injuries are our teachers. This ease is our teacher, right? So then I say, okay, when well, I just get this knee injury where when I got it, I couldn't straighten my leg where the, the, the ligament had pinched. And every time I try it, it is inflamed and would pinch any time I straighten my leg. And so then I learn, okay, well, it's something I teach anyway in martial arts is don't lock out your knees. Always keep them slightly bent, just slightly soft. And, but then I could see when that used to happen that I wasn't doing it all the time either. Because any time I locked out my knee, I would get this, this pain shooting through it. So then for a couple of weeks or three weeks when I had that pain in my knee, uh, Any time I, I locked it out, a pain would shoot through. So the first day it happened, it might have happened 10 or 20 times. I locked out my knee and I get this pain. Next day it might have been a few less, a few less. Then by the end of the three weeks, uh, I could go the whole day and not lock out my knee. Uh, and I'd sort of ingrained it as an unconscious thing and then my knee got better because I'd learned the lesson. And quite often this is the way it goes, you know. We get some sort of dis-ease and it's a, some pain. And if we ignore that, if we don't uh, deal with it, and it could be something in life or it could be something physical, if we don't deal with it, it comes around again and it spirals inwards. And the closer you get to the center, the more painful it gets. So it's out here, you get the pain. If you don't deal with it here, it will spiral closer in. And the closer it gets to the center point, the more painful it becomes. And if you don't deal with it, it comes around again and becomes more painful, like a knock, like a punch. You know, get out of the way or each time it's going to hurt more, right? And if we don't pay attention to it, if we don't deal with it, if we don't learn from it, then it gets more painful, and more painful, and more painful until it gets to the center point. And when it gets to the center point, you know, that's uh, sometimes that's when we, 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 we leave the planet, right? You know, that's when we leave the third dimensional plane and move into another a dimensional plane or another paradigm or another um, universe whatever I don't know you know so you know that is um, that that's really how, how it works so whenever we have a pain whenever we have a disease it's, it's a blessing every every single time it's a blessing it's a teacher it's a it's a wake-up call quite often it's a wake-up call right and so it's important to educate ourselves and learn how to communicate to our bodies I, I, I had asthma since I was about four years old, um, but what a teacher it was. What, what a phenomenal teacher asthma has been in my life. I don't see it as this thing that I've been dragging through life. I see it as this phenomenal teacher that comes back um, what, and teaches me different, at different things at different times. It's, it's been phenomenal. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, and at different times I got over it for a certain stage and I... I sort of worked it out and beat it for whatever reason and then once I'd learned that lesson and I, I got what I needed to get then it would come back again 
And I was like, okay, well, now I need to learn about nutrition. Then I learned about nutrition, and, and, and then it went away again. And, you know, it's, it's it, my, oh, my environment. I need to be in a clean environment. And then it went away again. Oh, you know, I need to be following my, uh, my, my mission in life. And as soon as I get back on track, that goes away again. So it, used to, it would come back, and it hasn't been, been here for, for quite a long time now, but um, you know, it would come back and teach me different things at different times. So you know, it, it's been my friend. I see dis-ease in my life as being my friend, as hard as it was, as hard as it was when, when it's one of the hardest things in the world when you can't breathe. When you can't breathe, nothing is right, right? You just can't breathe. It's the most important thing in the world is, is to breathe. So when I couldn't breathe, you know, I, I got a great contrast of life and, and how appreciative I am when I can breathe. When I remember, when I, whenever I'm feeling ungrateful, I remember, look, Matthew, you can breathe. Wow. Do you remember what it was like not to be able to breathe like that? Every time you tried to take a breath, you would wheeze. You know, you need your inhaler all the time. There's certain things you couldn't do. Do you remember that? And at, at that time, you'd say, please, just take this away, and I'll just be so grateful every day of my life if I just don't have this. And now I don't have it, now I'm not grateful. You know, I, I see this contrast, and I have this conversation with myself whenever that happens. So hopefully that can give you an insight into uh, just me telling you my own stories, my own views. It'll give you an insight into whatever's going on with you, whatever is going on with people you know, uh, friends, family, whatever and maybe how you can help yourself and, and help them by offering them a, a different perspective on things and seeing that um, you know, d disease is our friend. As strange as it may sound, disease is our friend. Right? Uh, so let's see what Dr. Martini has to say about it in the book, The Values Factor. Um, it's, a, it's an opportunity to transform is, is what it is actually. You know, dis-ease is an opportunity to transform. You know, when, when, when someone uh, comes to me who's like re really overweight and says, okay, I'm really overweight, I can't do anything about it, I'm like, this is great. And they're like, like why? Well, I, said, I said, it's such an opportunity. Like, what, what do you mean? It's such an opportunity to transform. You know, what, what a beautiful transformation it is. You know, it's, it's something that gets uh, millions of views on YouTube is when someone has a great weight loss transformation, right? It's a, it's a beautiful thing. So, um, be, being overweight, having some sort of disease, um, it, there's, there's beauty in it because it's the opportunity to transform. And transforming yourself, transforming uh, life, that is, uh, there's so much in, incredible fulfillment in doing that in, and in the journey that you go on when you undertake your, uh, when you step into your transformation. It's a beautiful thing, right? It's opportunity. Disease is opportunity. Right, in disguise. So, uh, page 358 of the values factor. Disease is the body going backward. Years ago, when I was in the midst of my illness and wellness studies, I made an amazing discovery. Many of the body's illness states, including cancer, were initiated by cells that took a more primitive form, identical to an earlier stage of cell differentiation and development. As a general principle, the more a cell has evolved, the less likely it is to multiply. By contrast, cancer cells and other cells involved in various disease processes have literally reverted to a more primitive state. That realization led me to another. I wondered whether illness is some sort of devolution back in time, transforming the body into an organism that functions with less evolved perspective and more primitive cellular toolkit. I began to believe that our bodies have the capacity to move backward or forward heading toward either a primitive or more evolved state based on our more polarized or synthesized perceptions. Perhaps by going backward in response to less evolved, more polarized and one-sided perceptions, our cells and their symptoms are actually trying to give us feedback to try to wake us up and return us to a whole and balanced awareness. Now, many people who have not yet fully embraced this paradigm might misunderstand this concept. They might inaccurately hear me saying, if you're sick, it's your own fault, right? And, or anything bad that happens to you is because you attracted it into your life. In fact, I'm saying something quite different. I'm saying that events are neither bad nor good. They simply are. 
I am also saying that when you view life from an imbalanced perspective, when you believe that an event is bad or good, you throw your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems out of balance, which potentially creates symptoms of ill or illness. These symptoms are your opportunity to create a more balanced perspective and could actually be perceived as just as much a blessing as they are assumed to be a curse. Some, more, some people might say that this is a form of blaming the victim, but that perspective of bad events happening to an innocent victim is childish, antiquated and obsolete. From my perspective, there are no bad events and there are no victims. There are only events and human beings within a perfectly balanced universe that contains equal amounts of positive and negative. Support and challenge pleasure and pain. Achieving a balanced perspective enables us to feel love and gratitude for everyone we meet. Everything that happens to us, every experience we undergo, achieving a balanced perspective enables us to embrace the reality that we are always both predator and prey, and so is every other creature on the planet. The rabbit preys upon the grass and is prey to the hawk. We go out to pursue our goals and then run up against obstacles that seem to challenge our highest values. If we resist this reality as it is our animal nature to do, we will feel frustrated and unfulfilled, like a hamster running frantically inside its wheel. If we embrace this balanced reality as is within our human potential to do, we will find unconditional love, gratitude, inspiration and enthusiasm simply because we are living and part, we are alive and part of the universe. From this perspective then, illness is not bad, it's a wake up call. Disease is not some terrible evil trying to destroy us, it's valuable feedback mechanism to try to get us to balance our way of looking at life and also to balance our perceptions and actions. Thus I have come to view illness and stress as offering valuable and meaningful insights into evolution, moving forward, and devolution, moving backward. I have learned that when we are under stress, we are more likely to activate the same immune pathways that are used by other mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and less evolved or earlier forms of life. This is a survival mechanism because when we're in fight or flight mode, alert to danger, our bodies go backward to primitive responses that are accustomed to handling the perceived danger. Just as emotionally, when we are under stress, we will go back and repeat old patterns that we have otherwise left behind. In the same way, when society is stressed, it often goes back to old religious beliefs and other old patterns of behavior and even to older forms of architecture, curiously enough. The more imbalanced your perceptions, the more primitively you respond. The more balanced your perceptions, the more you evolve and move forward. That's because again your optimal growth occurs at the border of support and challenge. When you perceive that your environment is perfectly balanced, you evolve and progress. When you perceive that your environment is out of balance, you regress. When you are masterful, you understand that the world has a perfectly balanced dynamic of complementary opposites. When you see that perfect balance, you are graced and not stressed. But when you don't see that balance, you experience stress in the form of distress, boredom, or burnout. Stress causes blood to flow to the most primitive part of your brain, which causes an imbalanced response, either an excess of deficiency of some kind. So if you're in a state of infatuation or resentment, or if you perceive a high degree of support or challenge, and your stress levels become elevated, you will actually revert to a more primitive physiology and brain function with a more active amygdala, the part of your brain that controls our panic and fear responses. The physiological response often results in illness. By contrast, when you're in a poised state of gratitude and love, blood goes to the most evolved part of your brain, known as the prefrontal cortex, the creative executive control center, or the tele Cephalon, blood in the portion of your brain helps to generate a balanced or governed response. This is yet another way in which the values factor contributes to wellness. If you're alive according to your highest values, 
If you're living according to your highest values, you have the highest probability of finding and embracing that optimal balance of support and challenge. If you're subordinating yourself to external influences and trying to live by somebody else's highest values, you will be more likely to impulsively seek immediate gratification and pleasure while instinctively trying to avoid pain. You're likely to end up in a state of juvenile dependency, behaving as a follower rather than a leader, perhaps even becoming an addict. Your imbalanced perceptions are always more likely to result in illness. Wellness occurs when you are not at one with the natural when you are at one with the natural balance of life. But illness occurs when you perceive a false distinction between yourself and the world around you and then attempt to live in an imbalanced manner. Again, this illness has a purpose. Its symptoms are kind of feedback to your conscious mind to make sure you live authentically according to your highest values and reawaken to a balanced awareness. The moment you do, your body dissolves the symptoms. How do you know you're living authentically? You have tears of gratitude for your life and for what you love to do. That's why I have been saying for nearly four decades that gratitude and love are the two greatest promoters of wellness on this earth. I have asked hundreds of thousands of people what they would do if they had only 24 hours to live and they all said the same thing. They would use their final day on earth to say thank you and I love you to everyone that has contributed to their life. Every human being on this planet wants to be appreciated and loved for who they are. This is why gratitude and love are the cardinal tools of wellness along with certainty and presence. All four of these qualities spontaneously occur when you live congruently with your highest values. Okay, I think that's probably enough for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll get into the joy of depression. I'm gonna love that one. Joy of depression. Um, the, the great miracle of life comes with a shift in perception. You know that that's the that's the truth. That's why people talk about miracles happening. But miracles happen with a shift in perception. Once we change our perception of, of events, of, of things, of ourselves. Life can just change like that. The, the veil can just fall away, you know, the curtains can open and we just go, wow. It's, uh, it's, it's an incredible thing, right? So that's us for today. Thank you very much for, for joining me. And uh, make sure you tune in again tomorrow for day 60 of our life transformation program. And, uh, you know, it's very powerful, valuable information. So, you know, reflect on it. Uh, reflect on it. Don't just watch these passively. Reflect on on uh, what's been said, and uh, you know, maybe watch it a number of times to get certain key points and take notes. And by doing that, you will gain the most value from watching this series. So thanks again, and see you again tomorrow.